Just because something crushes someone doesn't mean they're going to go into crush syndrome. Yeah. Usually it takes about, it, and they say between one to four hours for crush syndrome to begin. And so the recommendations now are, if you get there relatively soon and it's safe to do so, free that person up from that area. So now let's talk about the drugs that we give prior to lifting that object off if we think it's been down for a while. We give the calcium chloride for the hyperkalemia that could be, uh, the patient could be experiencing, right? Correct, yep, just like we would treat any other hyperkalemia. Yeah, and so that's just to protect the heart. I think of it like uh, the invisibility yeah. cloak in Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Just putting that over the heart, yep. protecting the heart, saying don't pay attention to all that potassium. Mm -hmm. That doesn't cause any shifting of the no. potassium, right? Mm -hmm. Nope, just protects <clears> the cells. And so then we give the sodium bicarb because we want to alkalinize the urine. Because if I am crushing your leg, your muscle's gonna to start to break down and you release myoglobin, you got mm -hmm. potassium releasing, you release that, all of that myoglobin goes to the kidneys. Yep. And so in the kidneys, if you have an acidic environment, and so that myoglobin in that acidic urine wants to form these renal casts. It's like mm -hmm. rust on a, like a pipe. And so the bicarb is supposed to go in there. The bicarb plus all the fluid you're giving helps prevent those renal casts from forming. We're looking for more of a uh, urine output at this point, um, with 300 mLs an hour. Is it one to two liters about before we release it, correct? And then also continuing that infusion thereafter. But I think that it's really important to just try to buffer out those kidneys, save those kidneys. Because like you said, the big thing here is um, you know, the hyperkalemia, but oh, yeah. the acute kidney injury is huge in these guys. Hurry, we got this person so, here. Yeah. Get, get the app up. <laughs> yeah, get the app. Oh, <laughs> no service. <laughs> <laughs> 10 to 20 mLs per kilo, kilo of normal saline, the rapid bolus, and then afterwards it's five mLs per kilo. Um, and then outside of that, the only other thing it says um, for us is the sodium bicarb, the one milli equivalent per kilo for the hyperkalemia. So I think in that that predicament, um, if I'm seeing things on on the EKG, widening you know, of the QRS, the peak QRS, T waves, peak T waves, yep, stuff like that, I'm probably going to give that anyways mm -hmm. because we probably have our answer, you know. Yeah, and the other thing is just um, a bradycardia in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's like the first thing you'll start to see in a patient who's hyperkalemic. Um, it's also important to, uh, to realize that those muscles are going to absorb a lot of calcium, mm -hmm. so the patient could be hypocalcemic as well. Sure. So it's probably not a bad idea to figure that that calcium chloride or calcium gluconate is needed mm -hmm. in a crush injury.